Well, we're starting a, a different series today uh, focusing on night painting. It's an interesting genre, and uh, we're actually doing it on location downtown Boston in front of the Paramount Theater. Uh, background story is we had a wonderful meal across the street and a little alcohol and then we went out and stood in front of the Paramount and this is the sketch that I did which I came back to the studio and I was unhappy I didn't like it what went wrong I'm not sure so I'm starting afresh in the studio I had a couple ideas last night in fact I I didn't go straight to bed I, I did a study and I did a sketch a sketch to ready myself for the painting this morning and I think it's a good idea to to attack the subject while you're involved with it well mentally rather than wait until the right time so here I am in the morning and I'm going at it again and I did some thinking on the subject and how to uh, best show off this feeling that the night air is alive with these lights and movement <clears throat> and a drama. I'm starting with bright cad orange, bright cadmium yellow, right out of the tube, and using a small brush and starting to kind of lay in the the signage. It's an unusual working method to start so with such strong paint. Uh, but this this um, resolution came to me uh, and when I was thinking about it last night. So I'm starting with instinct, and I didn't start this way the previous evening. I started with a uh, uh, little bit of the sky, working from light to dark, adding dark buildings, and trying to apply the signage at the end. But I'm doing it a little differently today after thinking about um, the process. And I'm starting with the bright colors that I want to really set the tone for for the painting uh, drama wise and I'm also using a lot of dry brush so I'm making use of the white paper it's a little hard to tell perhaps from the video but these marks are sparkling they they're not solid they let the white paper come through and I find uh, that this is going to be a key in the painting because it's going to allow the illumination to manifest itself, at least the, the, the illusion of the illumination. Difficult phrase. Um, and that's what we are doing with painting, is we're creating illusions. We're, we're trying to create a feeling of three dimensions or movement or atmosphere. We're working with paper and paint and water. And, and we have to find ways to create the illusion. So it's a very creative process. Painting is a very creative process and yes, um, the greats in the past, the great artists of the past have certainly set um, set a standard, shown us ways to do things, uh, but living in our time we tackle new subject matter in new ways and we try to revitalize the media and the expression uh, for our time. So now I've moved from the, the application of bright cad red, uh, bright yellow, cadmium yellow, some orange, to a really deep, pure uh, ultramarine blue with a bit of black. And this is again almost straight from the tube. How often do we use the color with such, you know, uh, I guess opacity? It's not uh, truly transparent, but it is water. It's transparent watercolor, uh, and these this thickness is absolutely necessary to get the contrast that we need. We are counting on the white of the paper to come through uh, the broken strokes that we're using for the illuminated areas, uh, but to make those have a strong impression and to create this atmosphere of dancing lights we need those very strong darks up in the upper right hand corner over in the left hand corner a pure ultramarine blue and a pure neutral tint mixed very generously on the brush and i'm working on dry paper throughout the painting so far i have an idea 
for the foreground that involves more wet on wet technique. But for now, I want to finish the upper section. Dry brush. Look at the dry brush stroke I just applied. That, uh, that sparkle, I'm going to leave it because I want it to um, reflect the light that's across the street, have a shimmering quality that means sort of an edgeless quality, and um, really express the intensity of the light. So the, the painting's progressing and it's coming about very quickly. The upper two thirds of the painting is coming about very quickly. Uh, at some point, I'm going to come down to the lower section and um, join the lower section to the rest of the painting. But for now, I'm going to make uh, adjustments, details, add a bit of color to a bit of red on the side of the building. Uh, Giddy, who was with us last night, really loved that part of the motif, and I do too. I want to see it appear on the building. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to the side of the building. I'm going to add a little bit of um, uh, other color as well. But first, let's move to the lower section. Lower section is going to be slightly different. I'm starting with a really rich tone again, black with a bit of blue and a little bit of red fed into it. And I'm trying to do this quickly so that I can <laughs> work into it uh, while the paint is still wet. And my idea is to take this very flat background and to try and create a bit of glow um, to, to the background. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting to add water. While it's wet, I've got my board at a steeper angle and I'm adding water to that and counting on gravity to kind of ask it to drift down and and soften that edge that uh, forms the street, as well as to create a feeling of a, a glowing, illuminated area. So here we're using the, the nature of the media, painting wet on wet, letting gravity do its thing and carry the color downward. I'm applying some reds, some cadmium yellows, more water. Um, I like to call this technique provoking the watercolor because normally these are accidentals that we try to avoid, but they can be used. And on such occasion, I think it looks really good. I'm also uh, very concerned about uh, centralizing the motif. Um, I'm zooming in a little more than I did in the previous sketch to catch that marquee. And some things, I've taken some liberties with the marquee to make it more of a strong motif. One is I've connected a lot of the lights, especially at this stage, you can see it almost as a block of lights. And it's very much connected to that vertical marquee. And this con these connections help to make the, the strength of the shape uh, much stronger, uh, much more readable. And uh, you can always go into this shape and fragment it or uh, work on the edges to make it more interesting or uh, put uh, another shape in front of it. But I think it's important when you're um, working with a strong motif like this to connect lights and connect darks. And you can see that I've done that <clears throat> very much in this painting. And that's what's contributing to the drama, a very strong light against a very strong dark. And uh, that marquee shape where I've left a lot of white and some bright cadmium yellow is our attraction point. So I have to, I wanted to make sure from the beginning that that was the case. And um, then I'll refine it. Adding the reflected light onto the near building, get a feeling of that uh, bright marquee playing off the adjacent buildings. You can see how that uh, added water has really swooped down uh, with a lot of nice soft edges and is reflecting uh, the marquee above. And it's a, it's a basically this composition. You can see the cross, uh, the horizontal meeting the vertical, gives us a real, real definite uh, center and a very strong way to build a composition using this, the cross. Okay. So 
Uh, now it's time to kind of refine the marquee, give some feeling of how it comes outward over the sidewalk, how the lights are arranged, uh, but not nearly the amount of detail that's present in the photo. I want it I realized from yesterday's sketch that I went too far that direction and made it too definite and too illustrative or too, uh, let's say, too much resembling what I saw. Here I'm trying to resemble more what I felt, that power of bright light coming out from this strong darks. And so I've, I've changed my course uh, in thinking about the motif. And already I'm, I'm pleased with the, the result. I feel like I've taken the right steps and uh, that my idea uh, that my, changes my approach from what I was doing yesterday is uh, worthwhile. So uh, you can see the refinements I've placed. At some point I'm gonna be putting some lettering in. At some point I'm gonna be putting some figures in, um, but really 90% of the painting is done and uh, it's pretty clear to me how to to go forward it's a good feeling when you when you uh, your idea and it's just an idea it's just a inspiration it's not materialized yet um, actually comes to life and that's what i am uh, realizing now the palette has been pretty simple uh, cad red cad orange a uh, bit of um, uh, ultramarine blue and neutral tint, four colors, the primaries. In fact, if you think primaries, look for red, yellow, blue, that's what you see. They are intermingling, they are uh, tints of these colors as well. Um, but basically the primaries are at work here and a lot of warm colors surrounded by a lot of cool colors. This is another way to kind of concentrate the energy in the painting. Think of well, not a good idea. I was going to say think of it as a bomb, but don't. Think of it as concentrating energy, concentrating the, the visual energy of the painting in a certain area. And we lose all edges under that marquee. Whether it remains that way or not, at this stage, it's kind of interesting to see that um, that marquee has a really outward, the light is coming towards us in a blinding fashion. Some figures. Figures are going to do a couple things. One is they're going to create a sort of context, uh, a narrative. I want to show a crowd of figures and then some figures closer to us to give us uh, depth in the painting. So I'm putting in, look at just blobs. Blobs and I'll put a little head on top of these blobs. And as of yet, they don't quite look like figures, but um, this um, art form of visual communication is very interesting. If we get some, put a couple definite figures in the painting, pig, figures that are very readable, have arms, legs, heads, those little blobs, suddenly uh, we feel they're figures too, even though they're not nearly as detailed or as uh, clearly described. It's, it's kind of associative, associative. And the artist plays a lot upon that uh, when they're doing a complex scene. We count on those sorts of associa associations to be uh, felt by the audience and use that, um, use that knowingly in the painting. More blobs, more crowd. Uh, let's put a couple of figures in the midground, walking towards us, walking across the street uh, to get a feeling of animation. That's another <clears throat> important aspect to me is for the painting to feel animated. I don't want my figures to feel like statues. I want them to feel like they're in movement. Uh, I don't want the light to feel like it's frozen. I want it to feel like it's active. I don't want anything to really feel uh, quiet in this painting. I want it to feel really active. This is always a, a tricky part of the painting, putting lettering. Why? Because it's, uh, we want to know what it says. It becomes very quickly an, uh, a centerpiece. And uh, for this painting, it's okay uh, because it's an icon and 
Another reason is it's part of that central motif, part of our center of interest. I'm trying to avoid making the letters too crisp and too perfect. I want the letters to feel animated too. So I'm leaving them kind of broken edged. Again, utilizing the rough paper to uh, create a feeling of animation. Interesting, isn't it, to think we're painting a painting that is basically f freezing a moment in time, but we still want it to feel animated. Uh, I look at the Impressionists and their technique of um, putting small uh, dots or marks next to each other also creates a feeling of animation in the landscapes that they created. And so I'm using um, edges and um, kind of rough quality to the figures to give it that, to give my figures or to give the light an animated quality. Well, it's very quickly coming to a conclusion. Um, in this painting, I worked on a sheet, basically uh, 16 by 20, vertical format, rough paper, arches 140. I'm using uh, four colors that I mentioned, Holbein, Windsor Newton, I mixed them up. I'm using a couple brushes. I used a, some big mops in the beginning, mop brushes, um, and I'm using some smaller sabolettes now to, to finish the work. So maybe three or four brushes to do this. And uh, in terms of process, it was a little unusual because I used really thick paint from the get-go. And uh, we're not taught to do this. We're taught to gradually build up from a wet wash to a thicker paint, from a light to dark. And while I did start with some light areas, um, I quickly moved to my strongest darks. And I guess this uh, night painting dictates a little bit of a different technique. Anyway, the next uh, series, we're going to be moving to different locations in Boston and doing some night paintings. So if you see me out there, stop by and, and introduce yourself. I hope you uh, enjoy this series. I know that I'm really enjoying this one. We'll see uh, next week how that comes out. But it's a different genre, and uh, we kind of got... Well, I should really blame one person for this, and that's Patricia Stimson, who uh, is was inspired by the ideas, inspi inspired so much that she insisted that we go out when we were in Paris a few months ago to do a night scene. And, of course, everybody was enthused. We were talking, we were having dinner and drinking wine, and, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Well, as the night went on... <clears throat> um, people kind of faded and the idea <laughs> became <laughs> less inspiring and more 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 of a job anyway patricia uh, had such enthusiasm that i said yes let's go do a night painting on the streets of paris and we did and a fellow painter terry uh, joined us and we set out and we painted a, a painting of Boussy street in the heart of Paris, which is a very busy avenue. We sat down on the curb and we did a painting and and it was a, a fun experience. The painting came out okay. It was a fun experience. And that fun is translated into uh, the scene that you see here today. Uh, one of the challenges working outside, of course, you've got to find an area where you're going to have enough light, even if the sun disappears to be able to see your work. So standing in front of a storefront that's closed, uh, and Boston has these illuminated kiosks that give us a little bit of light and a little bit of protection. So that's what we're using tonight. And uh, you have to work a little quickly. You know, there's a lot of movement, a lot of energy in the scene. So we're exploring this drama over the next few weeks. Painting is coming to a conclusion. I'm tightening up some of the details. I'm leaving that center part rather raw. Um, that you can see the finished piece here. The Paramount Theater District in Boston on a busy night. I toyed with the idea of cars, but decided that cars and 
so close to pedestrians might give us an anxious feeling. So I just went with pedestrians and I'm happy that I did. I hope you enjoyed this painting. Thank you.